In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the acid morph pads, which were introduced in Acid Pro 10. The morph pads are a really cool way to manipulate effects using an XY interface. To open the morph pads, go to View, Morph Pads. You can keep the window floating or dock it into the interface. Click on the plus sign to add a morph pad. You'll see a familiar XY interface with four quadrants. Notice that when I create a track, I now have the choice of two effects targets, the audio track and the master bus. If we create additional tracks or buses, they will be added to the effects target list. We can assign morph pads to target single or multiple tracks, subgroups and buses, instrument outputs, and the master bus. This flexible routing workflow should inspire some creative ideas for mixing, sound design, and even live performance. Let's check out some of the presets. Click on the drop-down list and choose a preset. Assign an effects target. Again, you have the choice of audio tracks, buses, instrument outputs, and the master bus. Press play and try dragging the point around the XY interface. You have the option to blend how much of the effect you want by adjusting the mix level. Latch mode allows you to drag the point inside the morph pad, but as you let go, the point snaps back to the lower left corner. This is great for a single instance of an effect, like a delay or reverb throw. The active effects list will show you the effects that are being used to achieve the sound. By clicking on the effect, you can bypass it and click again to reactivate the effect. You can create additional morph pads by clicking on the plus sign. Morph pads can be synced together in a number of different ways, which can lead to some interesting results. With the first sync option, you can see the points are aligned precisely. With sync on X, the points will sync on the X plane, but not the Y plane. With sync on Y, the points will sync on Y, but not X. And finally, the points move in the opposite direction in mirror mode. In addition to choosing individual presets, you can choose a bank which will load multiple morph pads and presets. After you've created your own presets and banks, you can save them for future use. Now let's take a look at editing our patches. Before I start editing, I'm going to delete some of these morph pads by right-clicking and choosing Delete This Pad. To edit a patch, you need to enter preset mode by pressing Shift plus F10, and then press Edit Patch. In this window, you get a visual display of how the effects are routed. I need to point out, as of the time this video is being made, there are several features still under development within the patch editor. You can expect full functionality in a future update. But for now, we can edit our patches and set up morph pad assignments. If you right click on an effect, you have a number of options. I'm going to choose delete this filter and replace it with a different effect. Choose add new plugin at the top of the window and select a new plugin effect that you'd like to use. Make sure to reconnect the effect in the chain. We can also edit our morph pad assignments from this page. Click on the effect in the patch editor. Move the point in the morph pad to one of the four quadrants. Change the effect parameter. Now try doing this to the other quadrants. After you're happy with the results, you can save the preset. Press Shift plus F10 to leave preset mode. Finally, let's explore automating the moves we make in the morph pads. The automation is recorded in the master track. Choose right, touch, or latch in the master track, then simply make the moves you wish to automate. 